Hey gamers, Stogie here, and today I'm bringing you guys a computer build video on a piece of shit Dell. No, really, I'm bringing you a computer build video of an AMD-based computer build, but I wanted to show you guys first where we're starting. So here is my cousin's Dell computer that we are replacing for him. So there you can see the uh, fan that was blowing in on the CPU. You can see the CPU there plugged into the motherboard. Um, you can see the little piece of crap video card right there. Um, yeah, it's just a mess inside there, so you, you can basically see that. We took the CD drive out of there because we're going to use it for the new build. Uh, so there's the CD drive there. You can see the two one gigabyte sticks of RAM, and here is his CPU cooler. So among teaching him how to build a computer, we're also going to teach him how to take care of and clean a computer. All right, guys, so this is the budget AMD build video. All right, so here is all the parts as you can see, and just a little background on this build. My cousin has been a console gamer for a really long time, but originated as a PC gamer. Still liked a PC game a little bit on his Dell, but basically that went out the window as games got upgraded and his Dell got downgraded. So um, he wanted a budget build, so we built this whole thing for about 700 bucks, and I'm going to go through the parts right now. So here's a Corsair 600 watt bronze power supply. Um, it's a decent power supply, pretty cheap. Here is a Western Digital Caviar Blue one terabyte hard drive. So that's going to be where all of his data is going. Here is G-Skill Ripjaws X-Series 8 gigabyte. This is two 4 gigabyte sticks of DDR3-2133 RAM. So that's his RAM. Here is his graphics card. So his graphics card made by Zeus. You can see the box right here. It's the Radeon R9-270. This is, again, an AMD graphics card made by Zeus. Um, here is his CPU. So he's got an AMD CPU. He's got the FX6300 3.5 gigahertz 6 core processor. And you can see the stock CPU fan right there. So that's what we're going to be working with for now. Um, we're going to go over to the side here. And that's the DVD rewritable drive that we took out of his old Dell computer. So he's going to be using that in his new one. And here's his motherboard. Beautiful looking Asus motherboard. Uh, really nice. You can see it's the m 5 a 99 x Evo R2.0. This is a really good motherboard. So we went a little bit higher end on the motherboard. And here's his case. His case is the Cooler Master Storm Scout 2 Advanced ATX Mid Tower. So let's get into the build. You guys are going to be able to see here in a second. I'm going to put up the parts list. If you'd like to pause it or look down in the description anytime, there's a PC part picker list. Um, here's the list just reiterated. So you can go ahead and pause it if you want to check it out. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is lay the motherboard out on its own in a static free environment. No carpet, nothing around. You can wear a static bracelet. You can ground yourself, do whatever you want. Then go ahead and install the CPU. So all you're going to do to install the CPU is set it in the socket and clip it down. So we just kind of set that clip down and you can see uh, he's kind of new at this so it took him a little bit longer to get it in but there he goes and we're going to install the RAM next. So refer to your motherboard's con um, computer manual to go ahead and tell you which sockets to put the RAM in. So it, they're color coded and they're numbered. So we got uh, these two sticks of RAM that we're going to put in these two sockets and they just lock in and clip in just like that. Next thing I want to do is install the standoffs in the case. These standoffs keep the motherboard away from the back of the case and uh, you'll go ahead and lay the motherboard down on top of these later on. We're going to set the back plate in place because you need this in place before you put the motherboard in. If you don't have it in place, you're going to be regretting it later. So go ahead and make sure and get that done. Next, what we're going to do is lay down that case again, and we're going to lay the motherboard inside on the standoffs. So what you're going to want to do is place this delicately down on the standoffs. You'll see the standoffs. If you see the screw holes, kind of look through there. You'll see where they are. Um, you want to also fit it in that back plate at the same time. So you're going to kind of get it on the back plate, set it on the standoffs, and then maybe from the right side, you're going to apply a little pressure there and try and pop it through the back of the, uh, stand, or the back plate. So from there, you are going to go ahead and tighten the motherboard down with nine set screws in this case. Um, refer to your motherboard's manual, and it will show you how many set screws you need. But in this case, we have nine. One huge tip here is do not over-tighten these screws. You do not want to over-tighten these screws. If you over-tighten these screws, you could crack or damage the motherboard. So 
definitely do not want to do that. Just go ahead and get them snug enough to keep it from moving, um, and just when you start to feel a little resistance. So we're going to move on and take out the slots in the back that let our graphics card come through. So once you get the motherboard in place, you can see where the graphics card is going to go. So you go ahead and take those out so your graphics card will fit through. Next, what we're going to do is place the power supply unit in. We're going to place it in place, and there's little rubber mounts on the bottom that fit in and let you know when it is in the right position. And then we're going to turn the PC case around, and we're going to go ahead and screw the PSU in with these four mounting screws. So these four mounting screws will basically just secure this PSU and keep it from moving. You can see that the fan exhausts out the back. So that is an, a fan helping that PSU cool down. Next, we're going to install the graphics card. So the graphics card simply just clicks into the slot, and the back of the graphics card feeds out the opening that we made earlier. So once you place this graphics card in the slot, you're going to want to go ahead and place the set screw on the left-hand side just to add that other security measure to keep that graphics card from moving. So go ahead and lock that set screw in place, and we're going to move on. So what you can see here is I have power to the motherboard, I have power to the CPU, I have power to the graphics card, all coming from the power supply unit. So we're going to go ahead and flip the switch on. And what we're doing here is testing parts before we move any further. You also have a little speaker that came with your motherboard. You can plug that in down at the bottom. What you're looking for is the green light on the motherboard to turn on and that little speaker to just give you a beep. So there you can see our green light. And I did, in fact, get the beep when I turned that on. So our parts are in working order and we are good to move forward. Next, what we're going to do is set the disk drive in place. It will go ahead and give us a nice little click when it's in the right position. Go ahead and put set screws in that later. And then you're going to set the hard drive in place. So you have plenty of 3.5 inch bays here to go ahead and place hard drives and room for extra hard drives down the road. So you're going to refer to your manual for wiring next. Your motherboard manual will tell you how, where all these crazy wires go. So go ahead and take your time. Everything is labeled. If this is your first time, the wiring can be quite intimidating, but take your time and just plug them in where the book says. And we have it all wired up here. So as you can see, I got the CPU fan, the stock CPU fan in place. I have power to the motherboard. I have all the wiring done. The graphics card power supply there you can see. You can see the... Um, all the motherboard peripherals and upfront case things are plugged in. So all those wires are done. But what happens is you have a mess of wires out the back. So what you want to do is go ahead and organize those wires and tie them down to the back of the case, as you can see I did there, to make a nice design. And then you're going to go ahead and power up your PC. Power up your PC with a keyboard and mouse and monitor is very key that you have that keyboard and mouse. You're going to need them. You'll hear that beep when you first turn it on, and then if all goes according to plan and you did everything right, you should get a beautiful splash screen. All PC builders know that once you get that splash screen, it's a really, really good feeling. Um, you can see the CPU fan turning there, and all of the lights are lit up. This PC is working beautifully. There's our green light. So that's it, guys. We got a working PC build. So what you're going to want to do next is install whatever operating system you want to use. In this case, we use Windows 8.1. And uh, it worked out fantastically. So, guys, here's a list of potential upgrades. If you have some extra money laying around and you want to do a better build than this is, here's some things you can go ahead and do, like adding an SSD, upgrading the GPU or CPU, and adding some cooling options. But uh, basically, that's it, guys. This is a budget AMD build. This thing will run Titanfall. It'll run some other games. It'll run uh, Battlefield 4 on probably medium or high settings at a, at a nice frame rate. So I'm going to go ahead and power this baby up and let you guys see it. But thanks for watching this computer build video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Again, this is an AMD CPU and GPU build at a pretty nice budget. So shop around for those parts. Get good prices. And... Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Again, if you have any questions, leave them below. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.